So for everyone's favorite topic, we have tax credits and deductions. Starting with tax credits for small businesses, basically tax credits are a way for businesses to reduce their tax liability and increase their net income. Small businesses in particular may benefit from tax credits that are designed to encourage business growth and investment. Now, if you're following along the textbook, we're on page 34. I will say this isn't going to be verbatim with what the textbook has. The textbook goes into a little bit more detail, but I'm going to explain things slightly differently, just in a way that's a little easier to understand. Starting with the small business health care tax credit. Now, I'm going to list a few different tax credits here. But this tax credit is available to small businesses that provide health insurance coverage to their employees. Tax credits can be up to 50% of the premiums paid for the coverage. To be eligible, the businesses must have fewer than 25 full-time employees with average annual wages of less than 56,000. So if you are paying yourself as a W-2 employee and you want health insurance, just know that 50% of the premiums paid can be deducted or credited to your, your taxes. Next, we have research development tax credit. This tax credit is available to businesses that invest in research and development activities. The credit can be up to 20% of the expenses incurred for qualified research and development activities. There is a whole IRS publication on R&D. I recommend that if you are looking to revolutionize an industry or create a product, that you look more into that it honestly could be its own course. Next, we have work opportunity tax credit. This tax credit is available to businesses that hire individuals from certain targeted groups, such as veterans, ex-felons, and individuals receiving certain government assistance. This credit can be up to 40% of the first year wages paid to eligible employees, up to the maximum amount. This is why a lot of businesses really heavily focus on hiring veterans, um, not that this is the only reason, but this is definitely an incentive set out by the government to tell businesses like, hey, if you hire these classes of people, we'll give you a tax credit. The last tax credit that I want to mention is the employee retention credit. This credit was introduced in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, so it's fairly new and is available to businesses that have been impacted by the pandemic. This credit can be up to 70% of eligible wages paid to employees up to the maximum amount. Um, this is all about em employee retention. So if you're able to keep your employees during COVID, um, then you know keep them employed. The incentive was, hey, if you continue to pay your employees, keep them employed, reduce the unemployment rate, we'll give you a tax credit. The last thing is depreciation. And this is something that I think that everyone should be really focusing on. So basically, businesses can take advantage of depreciation deductions to reduce your taxable income. Depreciation is a way to deduct the cost of assets over their useful life, such as equipment and machinery, but also electronics. So let's say I bought a laptop for $2,000. I think I gave this example in another lesson, but I paid $2,000 for this laptop. Laptops last about five years. So that means that the laptop at the end of five years will be worth $0. So it has a depreciation value of $400 a year for five years. You can do the math, it's $2,000. That means that every year I can deduct or credit myself $400 for the depreciation of my laptop. And this goes for all electronics or anything that you use for your business. So if I was starting a t-shirt company, you know, where I'm, you know, silk pressing t-shirts and I buy this huge press machine, press machines are like $10,000, they last 10 years. That means every year I can credit myself or deduct $1,000 for my taxes, which is going to reduce my taxable income. And to show you the kind of the bigger picture here, going back to the laptop. So if my business made $1,000 that year, I deduct the $400 from the depreciation value of my laptop. That means that only $600 of my net income is going to be taxed. So that is why depreciation, in my opinion, is one of the like best tax credits or best deductions that a business can have because most of us are using our laptops, our phones, and everything else. Now, if you only use your laptop 50% of the time for you know work, and maybe the other 50% of the time is for school, then you'll deduct 50% of the depreciation value, which if the depreciation is $400 a year, half of that would be 200. Either way, you're still going to be able to deduct the depreciation of your electronics.
Let's first define what a business expense is. So business expenses are costs that are incurred by a business in the course of its operations. And if you're following along in the textbook on page 37, I break this down even further. But many business expenses are deductible, meaning they can be subtracted from the business's gross income to reduce your total taxable income, which I've provided examples in the last slide. One of those things is going to be home office deductions. This deduction is available to businesses that use a portion of their home exclusively for business purposes. The deduction can be calculated based on the square footage of the home office compared to the total square footage of the home. So if your apartment or house is a thousand square feet and you're using a hundred square feet for a home office dedicated to your business, that's 10% of your home. So you can deduct 10% of your rent or mortgage, your utilities, and anything else that is a home expense. Next, we have travel and entertainment expenses. So businesses can deduct expenses related to business travel, such as airfare, lodging, and meals. In addition to that, you can deduct business expenses related to entertaining clients, such as meals and tickets to events. Now, right now, you can deduct 50% of the cost of meals, but there are tons of nuances, so definitely check out the IRS publication for that. It's the IRS publication 535. There is a whole section on meals. Next, we have vehicle expenses. So you can deduct business expenses related to the use of vehicles for business purposes, such as gas, repairs, and insurance. The deduction can be calculated using either the total or actual expenses incurred, or the standard mileage rate established by the IRS. I highly recommend, especially with the fluctuating gas prices right now, that you utilize an, app, an application for this. There are tons of apps out there. So if you're using QuickBooks, for example, QuickBooks has a mileage and gas tracker. So you start the app and end the app whenever you're using your vehicle for business purposes, if you don't have a business vehicle, like a company vehicle. And then at the end of every single you know, time that you use your car for business purposes, get gas. And in QuickBooks specifically, you can take a picture of the gas receipt and upload it so it's associated to that trip. Next, we have office supplies and equipment. So businesses can deduct the cost of office supplies and equipment using the course of their operations, such as computers, printers, and paper. Now the electronics piece is a two for one. So you can deduct the expense of the purchase, but then you can also deduct the depreciation value. Then we have employee benefits. So you can deduct the cost of employee benefits, such as health insurance, retirement plans, and education assistance programs. And lastly is advertising and marketing expenses. And this is a big one. You can deduct you know, expenses related to advertising and marketing your products on, you know, or services such as web development, social media advertising, and print advertisements. This even includes if you are giving away free product. Like if you find an influencer on social media who happens to have a, a large following of your target audience and you want them to shout out your product or review your product, and you give them, let's say, a box of stuff for free, or you give them you know, a sample of your product for free, you can deduct that. That is considered advertising and marketing. Now this is a bit of a bonus section because I want to talk specifically about depreciation in section 179. So bonus depreciation in section 179 are two tax provisions that allow businesses to recover the cost of certain capital assets more quickly than through regular depreciation. So bonus depreciation is a tax provision that allows businesses to depreciate the cost of eligible assets. Under current tax laws, businesses can claim 100% of bonus depreciation deduction for qualifying assets acquired and placed in service after September 27, 2017. Qualifying assets include tangible personal property with a recovery period of 20 years or less, such as machinery, equipment, and computers. The bonus depreciation deduction is claimed in addition to regular depreciation deduction that may be eligible or available for the same asset. That means that businesses can deduct the entire cost of the qualifying asset in the year they are, they are acquired, the year you buy it, and placed in service. 
which can result in much more tax savings, which is kind of what I was talking about in the last section with computers. Then moving into section 179, section 179 is a tax provision that allows businesses to deduct the full cost of qualifying assets in the year they are acquired and placed into service up to a certain limit. So for example, in 2021, the section 179 deduction limit was $1,050,000 and the phase out threshold was $2,620,000, which if you're a small business owner, that's a great limit. Qualifying assets for the Section 179 deduction include tangible personal property such as equipment and machinery and certain software and real property improvements. The deduction is available to businesses that purchase or lease qualifying assets and use them for business purposes. So this can also be applied to rental properties. If you maybe fixed a house up to rent it out, some of the purchases that you made to lease that property out or to Airbnb it, can qualify for this section 179 deduction, but I highly recommend you look this up and then talk to your CPA or an accountant about what you can do about maybe certain machinery that you're, that you're using or property that you're using.